Ron, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear me. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Come take a seat. Welcome. Um, thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, I'd just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the Aboriginal <coughs> elders of other communities who may be here today. Thank you very much, everyone who has made it. Um, we are here to celebrate the International Day of People with Disability. My name is Laura. I am from AAA Play. I'm the manager of the program. And we recently just went from being a metro-based program in August to covering the whole state of Victoria, which is very exciting. So consequently, <laughs> thank you. Uh, consequently, to my left here, we have a tripod set up and we are currently Instagram and Facebook live streaming so that our regional audiences can help us to celebrate this amazing day. Uh, so let me just give you a bit of background, please, about International Day of People with Disability, which fortunately, while I've been planning this event and other programs across the week, I've been able to say that a lot, so I've got it down pat, but it's quite a mouthful the first time you do try and say IDPWD. Every year we celebrate International Day of People with Disability, and this has been since its inception in 1992. Uh, thousands of community organisations have held International Day of People with Disability registered events across Australia. And the theme for International Day of People with Disability for 2018 is empowering persons with disabilities and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. This theme focuses on empowering people with disabilities for an inclusive, equitable and sustainable development as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So I would um, like to just very quickly as well let you know about AAA Play and I'm sure most of you that are in the room here are very familiar with us uh, but also for the people who are tuning in online just to give a bit of scope. Uh, AAA Play is a state government funded program proudly operated by Reckling Australia and we help to connect people with disabilities to sport and recreation programs offered across the state. And we do this by working closely with all of our fantastic partners at the various regional sports assemblies, state sporting associations, peak sporting bodies, um, and other important disability organisations within the state. So I get basically to do the very best job in the world because uh, I get to go home with warm fuzzies every single day. Um, I would now like to please introduce to you to say a couple of words our wonderful CEO of Reckon Australia, John Bowles. Well, I'll tell you, being the CEO of an organisation uh, delivering sport recreation opportunities right across Australia is one of the most privileged positions to be in, but also uh, when I come to an event like this and uh, take after someone as talented as Laura, uh, it's, it shows the depth of the, the skill set that we have as an organisation. I want to take the opportunity firstly to also acknowledge the traditional owners of, of this land on which we uh, meet and pay my respects to elders both past and present and in the future. Uh, to uh, all of our invited guests, thank you for coming today to this launch. Uh, to Michael Brown, our new chairman of uh, Record Australia, thank you again for joining us. This is Michael's first formal engagement, official engagement as chairman of Record Australia, and, and we trust one of many, many to come into the future. Uh, to the representatives from Sport and Rec, uh, of course, Andrew and, and Rachel, thank you for also joining us. It's really important for me to acknowledge that uh, Sport and Rec, and, uh, and of course, through Andrew and his team, who have been the architects for establishing the Access for All Abilities single port, uh, web port information service uh, now six years ago, actually, Andrew. Uh, so it's uh, an extraordinary journey that we've been on now in partnership with, um, with Support and Rec. Also, I'd like to acknowledge and thank all of you, and that is representatives of the community, state sporting associations, local government authorities, uh, it's great to see Richard from Disability Sport and Rec, a good friend of Rick of Australia. Thank you for, for coming as well. 
and, and of course all of the other uh, groups representing those agencies that we work with to access and provide information to people with disability and their families. I need to importantly acknowledge our uh, very uh, important invited guest and that is Ke Kelly Cartwright. Kelly, we thank you so much for joining us today and celebrating this occasion and being part of the panel. So thank you again for joining us. Um, and, and of course importantly to our AAA play ambassadors. And we have, we have a number here that I'd like to at least acknowledge uh, moving forward and that is Chelsea. Chelsea, if you'd like to stand up so people can see who you are. <laughs> Harry, if I can get you to stand up again. Andre. And also just to acknowledge Jenna, uh, who's also supporting the AAA play team. So again, thank you so much for attending. Uh, to Laura and to Seth, uh, the two driving powerhouses of the AAA play team, thank you so much for putting this together. And of course to the wider uh, Red Link Australia team, thank you for also supporting us. John. It's time to meet our special guest for this morning. She is a gold and silver medal Paralympian in long jump and set a new world record in 2012 for this event. As if that wasn't enough of an achievement, her latest passion is powerlifting, where she has already represented Australia at the World Championships and Commonwealth Games. The rec world record for able body powerlifting is now in her sights, and with this record of achievement, it would take a pretty brave person to bet against her. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce Kelly Carver. Netball field, and for me, 
when I, when I decided that I wanted to get back into sport, I looked to running. And I didn't look to running to compete at the Paralympics, I just looked to running to be fit for everyday life. And it wasn't really till after year 12 that I started seriously training for athletics. So after school, um, I became a full-time athlete in athletics. So it was sort of this stage where I went from netball every day, loving it, to not knowing what I was going to do to becoming a full-time athlete in sprinting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned before, um, we're really excited because we've gone from operating this metro-based uh, program for the last four years to now covering the whole state of Victoria. So huge expansion. And part of that we now cover uh, the Barland region, um, including uh, Leisure Networks so are <coughs> out there um, as the RSA to help facilitate programs in that area. Um, having grown up in Geelong yourself, can you tell us about your experience accessing inclusive sport in a regional area? Yeah, like, to be honest, at the start, I found it very difficult uh, to navigate my way through, not just starting running, but finding a way to become competitive. I was down at the athletics track, track at Landy Field, and it took me, I think, five times to get out of the car to actually go into the athletics field because there wasn't a group of one-legged runners I could go and join with, or anybody really with a disability. So I, it was daunting, it was scary, but, um, you know, eventually I did it and that's when the door started opening and that's when a PE teacher actually at school came up to me and said they've got a Paralympic talent search. So regionally they're really great with Paralympic talent searches, they're great with putting you in touch with people in the same way. But for me it was actually quite hard and I still find it every now and then that I get a message that asking some, someone with a disability asking me how do I get into sport or where do I go or what do I do and my answer to them is Go to your local club, it doesn't matter if there's a disability part or an able body part, everybody welcomes you with open arms and sometimes you just have to train with them for a while to figure out that where to go or what to do and usually you'll find somebody who knows somebody that knows somebody and that's what happened with me and um, even though I was the only one in Geelong on the track with one leg at the time, it started opening doors for me and that's when I started to realise there was a lot more people around. Yeah, yeah, and you found your community. Yeah, I did. And Geelong, the reason why I'm here today is, you know, they got behind me and raised money for my first running leg. So regionally, I'm very lucky that I grew up in the town of like Geelong and Port Arlington because the, the tight-knit community, um, you know, got, got behind me 100%. Amazing, amazing. Um, and I suppose this kind of very much leads in to the story you're talking about, sitting in the car and not wanting to get out. Um, what is your advice to empower people with disabilities, and in particular women as well, uh, there's huge focus at the moment with the This Girl Can campaign yeah. um, to, to really try and get that equality across um, our genders. Um, so, in particular, women who, who think that they can't be involved in sport, what is your advice to them? Mostly you can. <laughs> um, I think that people worry too much about what people might think, and that's what happened with me. I was too nervous about what people might think going down the athletics track with one leg running 30 seconds for 100 metres. And then I started to realise, going down to that track, these people weren't there putting fun of me. They were there to support me. They'd never seen anything like that. And they were there wanting to see me succeed too. So I think people need to get out there, put their foot in the door. Um, it's hard to build confidence, but I think they need to realise that they have just as much right doing that than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And make connections. I've already sort of talked about some connections here today about LinkedIn. I'm not really good on LinkedIn, but I will be after today. But, you know... The internet these days, research, you know, research people. I get people asking me all the time, where can I go, what can I do, how did you get involved in sport? And there might be a netballer or a footballer or somebody with a disability or a woman in sport that you want to know how their journey, contact them, connect with them, because, you know, that's the way we work now. We, we look at connections, we look at the way other people work and we can hold, hopefully follow in their footsteps. But I think, you know, I think people need to believe in themselves more. I think, you know, I was 15, 16, so obviously I was a bit young at the time to fully believe in myself, but it took me a few years, and once I did, I realised you get one life, you get one chance of life, and you really need to do what you want to do and what you love. Thank you. That, that is amazing advice. Um, can I please get you to give Kelly a round of
one of our AAA play ambassadors now, but before I um, rave about her and her wonderful accomplishments, um, for those that are not aware of what our AAA play ambassador program is, we work with um, an amazing group of individuals, and John introduced a couple of them that are here today, and they, they range from as young as six years old, uh, Sunny Renison, who has only just turned six recently, so I don't dare get that wrong and downgrade him to a five-year-old. I have been told off previously. Uh, so they do range from six years old um, all the way through and they cover a range of um, amazing humans from, you know, just everyday people to um, professional athletes um, of all genders and all disabilities, able-bodied and intellectual. Um, and so we really love welcoming these guys into um, our little world because they help to, much like Kelly's talked about, um, really champion the fact that anybody can do it um, and, and really uh, spread that word. So without further ado, please let me introduce you to introduce to you Chelsea Harrington. She's represented Victoria in track and field while completing year 12 and was honoured with the prestigious Pierre de Cuberton Award. I'm not French, clearly. <laughs> this award recognises students' academic and sporting excellence, but perhaps most importantly, the recipient's dedication to Olympic values, especially sportsmanship. It's pretty easy to see why Chelsea was invited to become a AAA play, play ambassador, and we're proud to have her with us today. Could you please give us a Chelsea, as an ambassador for AAA play and a very successful young athlete, what have you found most valuable in helping you to be more active? Well, just the fact that um, um, when I was y younger, um, I wasn't really that, that interested in, in sport, but, um, but when, I just, uh, when I moved up to high school, I um, really started to see how inclusive um, sport can be. And um, basically, exploring all the different programs for um, for athletes with disability is through the years, and it's really taught me um, a lot a lot about um, not just about myself, but but also about um, others around others around me, like Ke like Kelly, for example. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'd also like to please um, introduce you to our next panelist. Um, most of you are already probably familiar with David Moody. He's the State Manager for National Disability Services, also known as NDS, um, and is a great friend of Breckland Australia and AAA Play. Um, NDS is the National Industry Association for Disability Services, representing over 800 non-government organisations and operates several thousand services for Australians living with all types of disability through their members. These range from small support groups to national multi-service organisations. David's passion is social justice and assisting vulnerable members of society to improve their lot in life. Please make him welcome. <laughs> ah, thanks David for being here today. Thank you. Uh, so you've been in, in the sector for quite some time, uh, as well as supporting AAA Play for a number of, number of years. Um, and those conversations that you've been engaged in um, have really focused on the importance of supporting people with disability to engage in sport and recreation. Um, so can you uh, talk to us a little bit about what those um, major trends, and uh, sorry, key trends and major shifts um, around those conversations that you've had that you've noticed? Thanks, Laura. Um, look, um, I think what we're seeing is a really, a really positive trend in terms of the willingness of people with disability and as important as their support networks to actually see the virtue of risk um, rather than basically wrapping people with disability in cotton wool and saying um, that they shall never basically um, play mainstream sport because people with disability don't play mainstream sport. They shall never actually um, do recreational activities with people who don't have disability because that doesn't happen. Instead what we're starting to see, and it's particularly notable in our experience um, with Gen Y parents and Gen Y people with disability and millennials, is the notion of empowerment, and the notion of we people with disability and we supporters, we families, we want to be part of the same community as everybody else. And we insist on our right to take the same risks or similar risks 
as everybody else. So I think that's really, it's really important to emphasise that, that. There's a real sense of empowerment in the disability community. Um, there is this phrase that was, I was hearing a lot yesterday, the International Day of um, People with Disability Events, nothing about us without us. And I think it's a really powerful phrase. Basically, is an assertion by the disability community and people with disability of their right to be involved in everything that everybody else is involved in, and at least to be um, measured, um, you know, me measured as you know, human beings with the same rights and abilities and, and, and capacity to, to give stuff a go as everybody else. Yeah, awesome. That's amazing. Thank you. So I have got a question that I'm going to go through and, and ask each, well, one question for the whole panel. So we might start with you, Chelsea, seeing as you're, you're down the far end. <laughs> so um, the theme for International Day of People with Disabilities empowering persons with disabilities and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. What does that mean to you? It means to me, um, basically, oh, well, I should have thought this through properly. <laughs> um, it basically me means to me um, gathering up, up every single um, person with a disability and um, just saying to them, you know, you know if, you, if you're interested in stuff, something such as sport, then, then don't be afraid to give, to give it a go because what I've learned during my sporting journey is you never know what, what you might get achieved because um, when I went to um, represent Victoria, I didn't know that I was going to be able to walk away with, um, with two, bro two bronze medals, so it just it blew my mind. That's awesome. Thank you.
we would get to a point of being reasonably confident that ours is a society which is in the business of empowering people with disability, if every school teacher, if every principal asks not what can't you do, but asks what can you do. I really think that, you know, if one of the first two kids in the state school system, um, you know, and, and one of whom basically needs to support, having, having um, a society in which rather than people with disability being, if you like, asked to self censor and sort of concern what they can't do, particularly kids at school, if we could get to a point where the school system, the mainstream education system, started off the conversation with every child and every parent asking what can they do, that would be, um, we'd be on the path to empowerment in that regard because it begs a positive conversation. Yeah, amazing, thank you. Can I get a round of Obviously, you're very aware of the NDIS and know that you're not the NDIS, and you get that confused a lot. Just to make that very clear. Thank you very much. So, I'm not having a go with you. I'm just asking a general question. What do you think about the NDIS rollout and how it's supporting people with disability to get more involved in sport and recreation? Well, thanks for the question. Basically, um, National Disability Services is the big body partnered with Carers Australia and the uh, uh, Australian Federation of Disability Organisations under the banner of every, every Australian counts some years ago now to support the NDIS. So everything I'm about to say should be viewed through the prism of our active support for the scheme conceptually and in reality. But um, it's fair to say that the scheme has it's, you know, it's been a bit clunky um, in terms of its rollout. It's been a bit clunky in its implementation. Uh, it's fair to say that the planning process um, could have seen sort of world of improvement in the early days and in fairness the agency, the NDIA itself, acknowledges that. It's also true, however, to say that um, the, uh, the evaluation of the NDIS by those who are participating in it, NDIS participants, people with disability, um, is getting increasingly positive. I think if I point to, um, I, I think the most positive statistic associated with the scheme is the fact that more than 50,000 Australians under the scheme are accessing disability services for the first time in their lives because of the scheme. And that, on any measure, has got to be worthy of, of, of acclamation, I think. I mean, for all, you know, I mean, as the representative of disability service providers who are having to navigate a very complex system, I could bore the audience for the next two hours with you know, a range of issues. I won't, I promise you. Um, I think that um, if the NDI has achieved, achieved nothing else and it's achieved much more than this, it's stimulated a positive conversation about what it means to have a disability and what it means in terms of community's expectations of how we support people with disability. And that's also been very positive. I think community attitudes are changing, at least in part, because of the existence of the acronym NDIS. My name's Aidan, I'm going first before Rachel. <laughs> I'm also from Disability Sport and Recreation like Richard, but I had a question for Callie. Um, obviously, the last year particularly, we have seen more of that awareness you're talking about for disability sport. What do you think it looks like in five years' time? What would you like to see in terms of disability awareness? Oh, look, I'd love to see it nationally on TV, you know, wheelchair sports. Um, you know, the Paralympics, yes, we've got Channel 7 rights, but they, they didn't put a lot on in the, in the Rio game, so it'd be great to be on national TV everywhere in Australia. I think more programming in schools to raise awareness for kids to start at the grassroots, because I think that's where it really starts from kids. Yes, people apply disabilities later in life, and we still need to work on those and those resources for people, but in five years' time, I want to see at school or wherever they are, someone with a disability just play normal football and, or, as much as they can with everybody else and being included. I think we need to, I think in five years time, I hope we don't look at people and go, they have a disability, we look at their abilities. And um, you know, we don't necessarily look at somebody and, and firstly see their disability, we see them as a person. 
Um, thanks, it's Rachel from Sport and Recreation Victoria. Um, my question is for those sport organisations um, and organisations here that offer activity for people with disability. Is there one piece of advice you can give them, other than promoting themselves via AAA play, um, how they can connect in with um, communities of people out there wanting to do something? I'm a little bit biased here, but what are you talking about other than? <laughs> Um, I suppose for that question, should we, is there someone in the audience that wants to actually respond to that? We're kind of throwing a bit backwards here, but there's a lot of state sporting associations um, and, and peak sporting bodies and all that. Is there anyone that wants to speak to that? Alison, I can see a, a hesitant hand raised there. Um, as you might know, I'm, I'm from SNAP and we have autistic pro, uh, programs for autistic kids. We go through um, school network. Um, we also go through social media. We are uh, parents of autism ourselves, so we put discussions. We're a little bit enclosed in that the networks that are online can be quite, um, how do I say, protective of themselves. Private, very much private. A lot of them you won't find on a social media search, um, but they're out there and they're in the hundreds and thousands. Uh, and we don't necessarily like to be sold to because there's a lot um, of focus uh, on disability, especially with the NDIS, and there's a lot of people wanting to sell to us. Um, so we're a little bit protected that way. Um, I would suggest that if you do find somebody with a disability uh, within your network, then just ask them to spread themselves within that network. Because guaranteed, you find one, you'll find a whole load of them behind them. Um, so when you do find somebody, then then ask them to, to promote from within yeah. their disability network. Awesome, thank you. And, and I suppose, uh, Chelsea and Kelly, you both probably could talk to this very much as well from a, a participant perspective. Have you gone about finding programs for yourselves? <laughs> um, look, social media is massive these days, but also putting yourself in touch with people um, from like like minded sports. I, I know now in the last when I, when I started sports 14 years ago now, um, it was actually very hard to find um, somebody to to go to maybe with elite sport, but I know now if you contact your local netball club or your local basketball club, athletics group, they'll, there's 95% of the time they'll know somebody to contact. They'll know that there's already a group of people with a disability training and know there's already maybe a coach or a leader training somebody with a disability. So I think people need to reach out and start. And it's not necessarily gonna be there right in front of you, um, all the answers, but I think you need to start connecting and talking to people and getting on social media and getting on LinkedIn, which I'm going to get on, like I keep saying, yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn is a great thing to do. So I think you know, getting on there and connecting with you know like-minded people or the people who you know want to see the same change that you do. Yeah. Well, um, from what I've learned with experiences, um, nine out of ten times that there will be like so someone in in your um in your area or, or even in, in your school in my in my case because I'm still stu studying at the moment and that that will um that will guide you in the um in the right direction to um to success and that's what I've pretty much le learned um from experience so um, yeah thanks or um you could go to www.aaaaic.org.au <laughs> <laughs> I um, thank you very much, everyone. I would like to now invite Reckling Australia's recently appointed chairman, Mr. Michael Brown, to officially launch the Triple A Play Find a Leisure Centre Search database. Uh, Michael comes to Reckling with a wealth of executive and corporate governance experience in the world of sport having been CEO for the Rugby League World Cup in 2017, former Chief Commercial Officer for the National Rugby League, former CEO for the ASC Asian Cup, and spent 10 years as Deputy CEO and General Manager before this. Michael, could you please come up? Um, thank you for 
with its own structure. It's a staggering statistic of a billion people living with disability every day. It's 15% of our population. One of my roles is as um, Chief Executive of Kidding Park Stadium. I work closely with them for many years and the Leisure Networks program, and I see the wonderful work that they do in our community. We must not stop that work. The theme for this year is empowering persons with disabilities and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. Triple A Play will be celebrating this fantastic event with an amazing lineup of guests and will be launching on the Triple A Play website a new accessible search feature for leisure centres with disability friendly facilities. For the first time, people with a disability and their families will have the access to a single website with comprehensive information about the accessible facilities offered by these leisure centres across Melbourne. The AAA Play website will provide information on the leisure centre facility, its location and its contact information, the number of accessible car park spaces, acceptance of, of companion cards, carry card discounts, accessible change rooms and hydroponic pools. AAA Play is a searchable directory of more than 650 sport and recreation programs available to people with disabilities. We launched in 2013 as a Victorian Government initiative and, and are proudly operated by Reckling Australia. Since then we've supported more than 72,000 users to access a range of activities within Metropolitan Melbourne and now as said recently, we're now supporting all of Victoria. We've now reached a milestone of 1,000 email subscribers, 700 Facebook users, and more than 3,000 unique visits in the last month. AAA Play is constantly striving to better provide people with disabilities, their families, friends, and carers with the assistance they need to fully participate in daily community life through sport and recreation. We know that being able to access information easily in one central location increases the likelihood of a person with a disability to engage with a sporting club and activity. As someone who's been involved in sport for over 30 years at every level, um, I really support what Kelly said, that the number of people who want to reach out to support people with disability is amazing. And for us to be able to continue to do that at every level of sport is really, really critical. Because our sport is one wonderful thing for our community it's a great opportunity for us to ensure that we include all members of our community, not just those who uh, feel sport belongs to them. I love the saying, nothing about us without us, and it's certainly something that I remember, so thank you very, very much. I'm pleased to formally launch the final leisure centre, so to find, sorry, pleased to formally launch the find a leisure centre search directory.